Liam and Sam on the Hudson River in New York, the most dramatic of settings for the CYC, the Continental Youth Championships, with teams from North America and Canada, including the Ottawa Gales. Mums and dads went along like Noel McGinnity from Scottstown in County Monaghan, in charge of the Gales' youngest team. Some of them relatively new to Gaelic games, and some of them more easily distracted than others. But they all had a memorable experience. You have to admire the considerable effort by the Canadian GAA family just to be there. It is worth coming down from Ottawa. It's an eight-hour drive, but that you don't even think about the drive uh, once you're here and you're experiencing it and you're seeing the kids playing. You know, a sport that I've played for 15 years and now my kids are playing. And when I see that and I, and I see that they're getting uh, the enjoyment out of it that I always have, uh, it, you know, it's fantastic. And now I'm able to kind of put back in by coaching and, and taking them down here. We're now finding that families abroad want to be linked to the games because of the sense of community, the sense of family and the sense of togetherness that being involved in the GA Club brings about. That's what we're saying since we started this organisation 130 years ago. It's now phenomenal that we can actually see that being taken up and being recognised by people who have no connection to Ireland and want to be part of what we have. Back in Ottawa, the Gales organised a summer camp the week before the CYC, nurturing a small but faithful connection to the GAA, helped by Thomas Murphy, a coach from IT Carlo via the Ulster Council, who are linked with Canada. It's really fun when we um, play stock in the mud and when we um, play um, real Gaelic football games for practicing. I think it's an awesome game. I think it's very fun. On the first day when I was getting ready, I'm like, oh, come on, I don't want to go. It seems boring. But then when I came home, I'm like, this is so much fun. I want to keep on doing it. And yeah, so I thought it was very, I think it's very fun. It comes from Ireland, and Ireland is the place that it was made in and my family doesn't live in it but our coach is Tom and he came from Ireland and he made this camp that I'm in. Passing it on to the next generation is all important to the Irish in Ottawa both in playing the games and in watching them thanks to GAA Go. Go on in, go on in, go on in, go on in, go on in. Well, you know, I, I never thought like that uh, I would be able to, to give them the, the, the Gaelic football. Like it's been a huge part of my life growing up and everything, you know, and, and now it's, you know, they're really, really taken to it too. And that's, you know, it's, it's, it's just marvellous, you know, out in 3,000 miles away from Ireland, you know, and yet I can still, you know, we can still teach them the game and, and their friends want to play it now too, which is, which is just fabulous, you know. We live off the, the energy of the kids, like they're loving this game here now, you know, they get to run around, jump and kick and all the rest and and, uh, and they're they're really really enjoying it you know so that gives us energy to say hey we're, we're we're onto something here you know so let's keep her going you know let's keep the momentum let's get this passion going the summer camp is also about the irish culture and the irish language <laughs> This is absolutely the full Irish. They're getting the complete package here uh, today and through the whole week. I've just finished listening to Pat Scott telling stories, the traditional Shanachy poetry, Irish poetry, Canadian poetry together. The kids are using the numbers in the Irish language. They ask permission to go to the washroom in the Irish language. So. When they come through a program like this, they're going to have a complete understanding of uh, what Ireland and the Irish culture really mean. The Irish connection runs deep in Ottawa, back nearly 200 years, deep into the very soul of the city. Well, all over around the city, you see the evidence that the Irish were here and what they did, the canal, Corkstown Bridge, you know, the, they estimate that a thousand Irish died in digging the canal, which is a feat in its own. It's on the World Heritage, it's one of the World Heritage sites. And even the Corkstown Bridge, 
won 120 to 4 over name of the bridge Nelson Mandela. So <laughs> it'll tell you that, you know, how, when, when they want to get together, how, how active and how, um, how much influence they have. The Rideau Canal or waterway is a spectacular feature of Ottawa. You can travel by boat right into the city centre and beyond. Uh, yeah, so we're on the Rideau River and it's part of the uh, Rideau Canal system. We're between Black Rapids Lock Station and uh, Mooney's Bay Lock Station. There's about three more stations before um, heading north before you get downtown and that will connect the Rideau River, which we're on right now, to the Ottawa River. And you could go down onto the Ottawa River and get all the way out to Montreal on the Ottawa. And uh, we had Ryan driving the boat there a little earlier. And uh, his, his heritage is from Antrim because his grandfather, my, my dad and my mom are both from Antrim. So that's, that's our connection to, to Northern Ireland. Over the course of Ottawa's history, you will see that much of the city was built up by Irish hands. Not just the canal, but a lot of the older buildings. So there were a number of individuals who were the working class and they were hired on to help construct what is this beautiful capital we have today. As things progressed into the 20th century, we did have an influx of immigrants in the 1950s and they were actually the ones who established the Irish Society of the National Capital Region. They wanted to be able to create a community for those new arrivals and have an organization that people could seek out if they needed any help or support. Moving on into the 1980s, of course, with the economic situation in Ireland at that time, there was another influx of immigrants who came over. And now you'll see that you have either the grandsons and daughters or the daughters and sons of those immigrants mixed in with the most recent influx of immigrants. And those you'll see some of the GAA players are individuals in their 20s and 30s who just were unable to find either work or establish themselves in Ireland and sought a new life either temporarily or permanently here in Canada. So now it's nice because we have a mix of the very old ancestry where there are people who are Kellys and Bradleys but arrived six or seven generations ago up until the people who you can tell from the moment you start a conversation with them that they weren't born here in Canada. The Irish have a powerful name, going back to, you would have seen clips earlier on of the canal, but many of the streets around here, I'm looking down at O'Connor Street over there, um, Spark Street is called after Nicholas Sparks from Cork, there's Murray Street, uh, streets all over the place have Irish names, and uh, the Irish have been very much a part of Canadian culture, but the Irish have integrated to the point that we are very much beneath the surface at this stage. We're no longer either, uh, we're no longer a visible or um, what I would say an ethnic uh, visible minority or, or in any way seen in that sense. We're seen part of the Canadian culture. You should try it, it's delicious. Well, people, don't, I didn't realise that the Irish are probably the biggest ethnic group in Ottawa. Ottawa was a very Irish city. It has, it has elements like Boston. Uh, so, you know, you're meeting people all the time here of Irish background. Some people are here from the 1830s and they still call themselves Irish. The Irish in Ottawa are unusual uh, relative to the United States. The Irish in Ottawa are all pre-famine Irish. Most of these people came over in the 1830s to build canals and various things like that. And, you know, they sometimes they put the people in Ireland to shame about their, about their pride in, in, in their culture and their ability to, to hold on to what's good about, about being Irish. Uh, to be honest with you, I love it. I work up my hobby. If I, if I wasn't the Irish ambassador, I'd still be here today, to be honest with you, Jerome. So it's terrific to get a job where you actually love it. The role of the church has changed in recent times. St Bridget's in downtown Ottawa was closed, sold and deconsecrated in 2007. Now it's an Irish Canadian heritage centre and its upkeep is still very important to the Irish community. It is important, yeah, because it's a, it's a heritage thing. Like I say, you know, this was a, a almost, I won't say a second home, but it was a, a place we came to and felt comfortable to have our, uh, you know, parties, uh, after game parties, uh, for one thing. And we had a good relationship with the, the priest who was here at the time. 
And then when it was bought, it, you know, like it, it could very well have gone downhill and, and just deteriorated. So it's, it's important to keep that up and keep, the, uh, keep continuity in it with, within, the, within the club and the, ch and the area as well, the church. And the, now that it's a, a more a community, Irish community centre, it's you know, important to keep it for the future generations should they wish to uh, keep going at that. One of the most successful businessmen in Ottawa is also a founder member of the Gales. Pat Kelly still plays a key role in the club four decades after emigrating from Galway. Back in the early days, his commitment was clear, both on and off the field. I remember the first, uh, our first AGM. It was the same day as my uh, daughter's uh, baptism and I had to sneak out of the house, go to the AGM and get home as fast as I possibly could a short time later without too many people noticing that I was gone. Pat's incredible. He's just, you know, he plays hard, he loves hard, he works hard. You, he never says no. You say, kids are going somewhere. We need to fund it. We need your time, we need you to line that. He's outlined in the fields, his garage is full of gear. There's, there is, you really can't sum it up. He's passionate to the bone about the sport and um, without him really the Ottawa Gales wouldn't, wouldn't be here. He, he's, uh, he's just really, he's an incredible Irish person in Ottawa and without him I don't think many of the organisations would experience the success they have had. If you've seen Pat Kelly, he does have a uh, male pattern baldness which I feel responsible for in a way because when we first started the ladies team, he, uh, he was our coach and none of us knew anything about Gaelic football and he would always be so frustrated that he'd go, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? And so he has no more hair left on the top of his head, so I apologize for that in advance. I was sort of confused at first going, I'm not sure what at first. is going on. I don't know <laughs> why this Irish man is yelling at me to, you know, on my bike. I'm there, I didn't bring a bike, so I don't know why he was yelling at me. <laughs> and, and there was this ball, I didn't understand anything and people were hitting me and I was like, <laughs> I don't understand. So, so that first summer was just a bunch of like, it was just this awakening of this whole, you know, new sport, new people, this whole Irish culture. People went to the pub afterwards and I didn't understand that. <laughs> I, like, I went home and I'm there. They're yeah. going to the pub after, I might try that. <laughs> and uh, She never stopped after yeah, that. Yeah, so that was yeah. my downfall at some point. But, uh, but then it was just, it was so interesting, so fun. And then just meeting all these new people was just incredible. So it just became a lifestyle. And then throughout the years, you would find yourself on the pitch. It would be raining, snowing thunder yeah. lightning and you would still go and my parents would say why are you going I don't know but I have to go <laughs> it's like a religion or something so you know for a Canadian uh, born person to come into this whole new world it was it was great we couldn't get enough we couldn't stop going yeah. we couldn't get enough of, of it the most memorable moment and I may get a little bit emotional here for me in my history with the Ottawa Gales is playing in a championship final in August um, with my bandana on because I no longer had any hair and um, playing in the forward line and doing a bit of damage I might add not to be boastful or anything but to, they fed the balls nicely to me and I wasn't going to miss and we won and I will never forget that I'll never ever ever forget that moment because the final whistle blew and every single Gales and the, the team we played we all gathered in a huddle and I don't think there was a dry eye because the team that lost didn't care losing. Well, they might have, but they, they conceded to the Ottawa Gales and they were, it was a great final. It was, it was, again, I mean, without words, it was the most memorable moment for me to be able to be on the field, four rounds of chemo in and, um, and to have my family around me because they, Gales, really are family to me. Brita did not have a lick of hair on her. She'd been going, she was in chemotherapy. She was going through chemotherapy treatment and she was sick as a dog. And, you know, you're always looking for players at the last minute. And we were just begging her to come to Toronto to play. And she wanted to, but she felt she shouldn't. But in the end, it was so therapeutic because it was her kicking, not only kicking Gaelic footballs, but ki kicking cancer 
in the butt and she just went on that pitch as just as if nothing was wrong and it just all the planets aligned that day because no matter what the ball would seem to get to her and she would drive it in the net over the bar I don't know how many points she scored that day but it was incredible like she was just and then after the game we all huddled and you know gave a, a speech and Brita said a few words and there was not a dry eye on in that huddle it was just an incredible incredible moment okay <laughs> so we can pass the ball with our hands or we can pass the ball with our feet so will everybody make a fist these days, Breda has another team. She's in charge of the Ottawa Royals girls soccer under 12s. And as an experiment, she brought along GEA coach Thomas to introduce Gaelic football to the Canadians and see how they would take to the game from Ireland. We have uh, 20 of our U12 little soccer stars from the Ottawa Royals out playing the National Sport of Ireland Gaelic football. It's their first time seeing it. They're absolutely magic. Would it be fair to say you're in your element? I am like a pig in muck right now. <laughs> I'm absolutely in my element. They're surprising me. They're, they're talented soccer players. They're all talented hockey players. But I think their calling is lost on them. They're natural with the Gaelic ball in their hand. What does it tell you about maybe the potential of Gaelic football in places like Ottawa, if it was exposed to girls like this? What does tonight tell you? Tonight tells me that we're missing a, a diamond a diamond in the rough here. It's one of the best sports in the world. And I'm not saying that because I'm from Ireland. I'm saying that because anybody can play the sport. If you play volleyball, if you play basketball, if you play hockey, if you play soccer, it really doesn't matter what you play. If you're a chess player, it's all about strategy, team. It's just a really, the skill sets are so transferable from all the games that no matter where you go in the world or what language barrier there might be, you throw a ball and every child can play. And the, the, the beauty of it is they need a pair of cleats or a pair of runners. They need no equipment. They need a, a patch of grass, a ball, and a number of kids, and let them at it. This is, this is exactly what I envisioned, but it's actually surpassed what I ever thought would happen here. I'm half crippled, and I had to get in and play myself because I'm absolutely thrilled. They're unreal. You know what's going to happen now, though? The problem will be when I have three training sessions, they'll be like, can we play Gaelic? Which is not really a problem because we will. The girls are talking about taking this on the road anyway. Taking, they really do want to. The group has been together. There's a tier one and tier two team. This crowd of girls have been together for about four years. So they're really, it's, it's, it's a real soccer family. And we're on about taking a trip to Ireland to play some soccer. And now they're saying, if we go playing soccer, could we play some Gaelic? And I said, absolutely. We're going to play about three or four games of soccer, three or four ga games of Gaelic. We'll have to do a bit of practice to take the Irish lassies on, but we'll be fine. So yeah, we're hoping in the next few years to go there. What's your game? The game that you're playing is like... Training night with the Ottawa seniors and a special guest who has helped pave the way for a major breakthrough for the Gales by getting Gaelic football onto the curriculum in local schools. Well, we're very fortunate to have a colleague named Rob Chasson and a number of other colleagues within our board. And they brought the game to the Ottawa Catholic School Board 18 years ago. And we have now in grades 7 and 8, we have all of our schools playing in a two-day tournament, one day for girls, one day for boys. And now that we have it there and we're building our foundation of having more coaches coming from the, Gale, the Gales communi uh, community, we now want to introduce it to our 65 elementary schools this upcoming year. So we've put it in our schedule. It's slated uh, for the spring, and we hope to have the, uh, the Gales help us bring some of the coaching and the teaching of the game itself to the schools throughout the winter and early into the spring so that we can have our own competition. But you've seen all the other sports. Oh. You've tried them all. You know sports. Yeah. How do you actually really think the Gaelic is going to catch on or will it catch on? Well, I think it's one of those things, our best explanation is to do it. Our best explanation is to do it. We can't sit down and listen to ping pong and radio. We prefer to get out there and play it. So I think with Gaelic football, all we need is those soccer fields that we have out there. We modify that and we modify the equipment that we have and we modify our rules for the inclusion, success and fun for kids. And we're going to do that. Delighted about what's happening now. It's, it's what we would dream would happen. We have the local GA club organising to go in to the schools. It's a real sort of a school club link. It's backed by the Ulster Council by their expertise and we're very grateful to them for doing that. Back at the CYC, the Gales fielded at various age levels and when they didn't have enough players to make up a team of their own, some of them linked up with the likes of Buffalo and San Diego. 
Um, well, I really like playing, um, but the playing with the different club is fun because you make new friends and um, you learn to play at different levels with other people. And uh, playing with people from different country and a different, totally different place, uh, it's fun because their impression of the world is different than yours is. So that's what I like most about it. Uh, it was good. Uh, I met some other friends from Ottawa, and uh, not everybody was from Buffalo, and so shared the same interests. And uh, yeah, it was fun. Uh, I hope the next year we'll have enough players for it, for an Ottawa team, but I guess this year just didn't happen. It would be nice next year and date if you both were playing on the same team. Yeah, because we're both from Ottawa, and it'd be nice if we could play on an Ottawa team together with a whole bunch of other Ottawa players. Looking to the future, there are signs of progress and lots of potential and young talent, enough to encourage the mentors and to encourage the young players to want more of the unique CYC experience, which they enjoyed to the full. On the scale of to one to a hundred, I would say a hundred. Hurlers from Ottawa also took part in the CYC. Wearing black and yellow and going under the name of Ottawa Air Oak, they also had a great experience. But they also struggle for numbers at adult level. Though love of the game goes a long way no matter where you are. Yeah, the Air Oak Club is uh, it's a great club. It's small right now. We've, uh, we've got uh, nine aside. We usually play against uh, Montreal, who are our closest uh, and probably our rivals but friends at the same time um, to, to come train and you know it's it's uh, it's hard to get people out but uh, you know we we always come out and just uh, keep keep it going really it's uh, it's one way to get out in the afternoons and enjoy the sun as well as you know keeping the touch in um, and yeah we just have to keep building keep going um, say like Toronto has a a massive hurling community up there as well and uh, they were in the same boat as us three years ago and a massive massive club up there now so we just have to keep building here and hopefully we can get somewhere with it. Numbers may be small in this outpost for the GAA but that is precisely why the 40th birthday of the Ottawa Gales really is something to celebrate. We have a burgeoning senior team. We have, you know, 33 new youth going to CYC this year. We have, you know, the highest number of family volunteers we've ever seen. Um, you know, thriving is the word I would use to describe our club right now. And we're going into our 40th anniversary. So, you know, the celebrations are going to be kicked up a notch. And, and this next year is going to be about celebrating what, what we've had, um, what we're going to have. But in this moment right now, um, we're, we're thriving and we love every second of it you know we we're a, we're a GAA club in the capital of Canada um, and we couldn't be prouder to represent this game to represent Gaelic games in Canada uh, doesn't matter if you're Canadian or Irish or whoever you know we'll take it because we're a family and we're a thriving family we're only going to get bigger